So I want to make shorter videos, but I can't talk about fragmentation without getting into page splits and fill factor. And I've been pushing this off, even though it's a performance topic, because the performance gains tend to be a little overrated. Plus, it's easy to make things worse by extending your weekend process or lowering fill factor. So I want to get into just what's happening and just what to do about it, but maybe you're just trying to fix a script. So I'm going to cover the basics and I'm going to give you just enough rope to hang yourself. So when I'm looking into fragmentation, it's usually because I'm looking around for ways to improve performance in general. And related to indexes, I'm looking for fragmentation or um, index usage, which I'm usually looking for unused indexes or missing indexes, but I'm not going to go into those here. Uh, and all of these use dynamic management views or functions. Okay, so let's look at the uh, script that I use to recreate this situation. And in here, I'm creating a table with two fields. And then uh, this, this is an identity, so I don't need to enter that value. So I just need to enter, enter rehash. So I, I'm starting off with zeros and I insert 100,000 rows. And then I update that rehash field to a longer value. And this is what causes the two indexes to fragment. And I have two indexes on the field. This first one is a clustered primary key, so that's constraint. And then the second index isn't a constraint, it's not unique. Um, it's just an additional index on the table, and, and I'm, I'm indexing the rehash field. And here's a, a sample of the contents of the table, and you can see that these rehash values appear to be random. They're not in any order like the ID is. So two things are happening as I'm changing these rehash values. One is the, the rows are getting wider and SQL Server can no longer fit them into the place where they are. So they have to be reorganized. That causes one kind of fragmentation. Plus, as I'm setting these values, SQL Server is trying to keep track of the order of, of the rehash values. And in order to do that, it causes a lot of fragmentation as well. I can see how fragmented they are using a database level report called index physical statistics. And I can see that it's recommending that I do a rebuild on both of these indexes. And if I open up these details, I can see that's because it's so badly fragmented. And I can easily do that if I find the indexes that are fragmented. I right-click them. I can choose Rebuild or Reorganize. Now, let's say you don't have this level of access to production. There's another way you can do this by using the Alter Index statement. And in this case, I'm using the All parameters so that it fixes all of the indexes on this table. And because I'm doing a rebuild here, um, that's, uh, uh, it could potentially take the index offline, so it helps if you use this with online equals on. But that might not be right for you, so I really do recommend that you look into the online documentation for this instruction. Instead of doing a rebuild, you could do a reorg, which takes fewer resources, and you don't need this switch as well. Now. If I want to see how badly fragmented they are, I can use this dynamic management view called index physical stats, which that should sound familiar to you because that was like the report that we were just looking at. And I've chosen to limit it to the table that I just created. Plus I added this detailed switch so we get a little more additional information. And you can see that it returned five rows, even though we only have two indexes on the table. 
and that's because each in index has uh, multiple levels. This clustered index has two levels, and the additional index that I put on the table has three. And this zero level is the leaf level. You can see this. And then the highest number within an index is, is the root. So here's the root, and here's another root. And I can see that the leaf level of these two indexes is badly fragmented. Now here's a, a typical set of rules that you can follow for whether you should perform a reorg or a rebuild. And if there are fewer than a thousand pages, then you really shouldn't do anything because uh, a thousand pages, uh, each, each page, I haven't told you what a page is yet, but I'll get to that. Each page is eight kilobytes, so that would be a total of eight megabytes. And it's really nothing for SQL Server to swap eight megabytes into memory. And at that point, you don't have a fragmentation issue any longer. So um, if it's less than a thousand pages, you don't need to do anything. And if your fragmentation percentage is less than five, you don't need to do anything there either. But if the fragmentation is between five and 30, then you should reorganize, and if it's greater than 30, then you should rebuild. So that's it for the basics, and now I'll get into the more advanced stuff. And um, data in SQL Server is either stored as a heap or a B tree. The only time it's stored as a heap is if you don't have a clustered index on your table. So a B tree is kind of like a binary tree, except there are a lot more, like hundreds, of pointers at each node, so it's not binary. And the idea here is that it flattens the tree structure so that you don't have to do as much navigating through the structure to get to your leaf level. And by the way, if there's multiple pages at a le level, then it's a doubly linked list. A page is eight kilobytes, and each page holds many rows of data, usually at least, and unless you have like a really wide table. And it's not just data, there's some additional information, for instance, the pointers to some other pages, or maybe you have um, you know, a, a list of where each row starts on the page. So what causes fragmentation? Well, if you know there's any space left in the page it's not completely full then it's considered fragmented so if you delete a row then you're leaving space if you update a row with a shorter text then that also leaves some space um, if you have really wide tables then a single row could potentially take up more than one page and I definitely recommend against that and finally the most important part here is page splits and that's when you try and squeeze a little more information into a full page. And now SQL Server needs to deal with that. So I'm gonna show you what it does is here you got a full page and you're trying to insert a little more information in there. So SQL Server creates an additional page at the end of the list and then moves half the data over. Now it has room to do the insert. So I'm gonna use a little PowerPoint animation here to show you what I mean. So here you're inserting the data, SQL Server creates the additional page, and then it moves half the data in. And now it has a little room to insert the row or update with longer text. And this causes two kinds of fragmentation. You have internal fragmentation, which is that the page is not completely full. And then you have logical or external fragmentation, which is that the pages are out of order. Now, internal fragmentation is the thing that I'm most concerned with. The logical fragmentation is not quite as a big of a deal. And internal fragmentation, it causes, it causes SQL Server to have to read more pages in order to get the data that you need. And with logical fragmentation, it prevents read-aheads. So, when you have like um, a lot of drives are solid state these days, that read ahead issue is not as big of a deal. And in that report that I was showing you earlier, there are two different fields so that you can see the difference between the internal fragmentation and the logical fragmentation. So here's the data that we were looking at before, and here's our logical 
fragmentation. And if I go a few more fields over, I can see the page space used. And I can see it's only using up 80% of the space on average in these pages. This is, this is the leaf level of my clustered index. And here's the leaf level of my additional index. So you can see that anything less than 80% is probably bad. So I hope this diagram makes sense. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would, but um, I want to compare those two percentages. And if we look at this clump in this lower left-hand corner, I can see that these are pages that are 100% full, and they're not fragmented at all. So here's the page space. It's 100%. And I look at the fragmentation percentage. It's 0. So this is where you want to be. In fact, if you were at 20% external fragmentation and 20% internal fragmentation, that's probably good. But you don't want to be way up here where your pages are 50% full and your external fragmentation is 100%. And, and all these dots that are up here, um, they're probably tables with very few rows and they're under a thousand pages. So that's that's how these ended up here. They, I'm probably just not reorganizing or rebuilding these indexes because there's so few of them. So how can we avoid page splits? Well, the best recommendation I have is you should really use an identity for your clustered index. And if not an identity, a lot of people don't like identities. Use some sequentially created value. There is another recommendation, which is to use fill factor. And you really need to be careful with this. But I'll explain it. Every index has a fill factor. And the default for that factor is, is set at the database level. And the default is 100%. Usually, you can change the default. I really recommend against doing that. If you're going to set fill factor at all, you should be doing it on an individual index level. Anyway, if it's set to something less than 100%, like let's say 90%, what you're doing is telling SQL Server to only fill each page to 90%. And essentially what you're doing is you're forcing SQL Server to fragment all of the pages. And this means that you're going to do more reads to get the data that you need. If you're going to mess around with fill factor, I would really recommend being very judicious about it. And I would start with one table that gets badly fragmented every week, and then come up with some kind of a performance metric. I, you know, Pick a couple of selects that include that table, and measure like how many rows they're returning and how long they take, and see if, as you start lowering your fill factor, if the performance of those queries starts to improve. And I would change it a little bit at a time. If you go to 95% or 90%, that's probably not too bad. But once you get into 85 and 80 and 75, then you're going to start seeing performance degradation or maybe an improvement. But you want to take it slowly. So we're getting towards the end here, and I, I've covered a couple of these. Don't use GUIDs as your clustered index because GUIDs are kind of random, right? So that's not a good thing to use as your clustered index. Your clustered index is where your data is stored, and those rows are wider. So if a page split occurs, it means that SQL Server has to do more work. You probably shouldn't use fill factor. And don't let your defrag script take up too much of the overnight process. Some do's are to put a time limit on your defrag script, so, you know, um, once, you know, if you defrag 10 tables and you see you've run out of time, just stop there and do them next week. You should prioritize your, the indexes that you defragment, and you can do that by, let's say, the, um, I, I often use the last update date of the table. And then that way you know whether, if, it's, if it hasn't been updated in a while, then you know it hasn't been defragmented in a while. But then again, you also want to use those percentages and the number of pages and things like that. Also try and keep track of those physical stats, what you've been defragmenting, and any additional performance metrics to see if 
those defragmenting processes have actually made an improvement. I have some additional dues for the badly fragmented indexes. And those are the ones that ha are, you know, after you've defragmented them, they get back up to 95% fragmented in a week. And in those cases, I would consider changing what you're using as your clustered index. Maybe it's not an identity field or some other sequentially created value. And then again, maybe you should be considering using fill factor with the warnings that I gave you before. So that's it. I hope that was clear. If it's not, please leave a comment in YouTube. Um, I also would like to hear any suggestions you have for videos that I should do in the future. Thank you.